teach him right, when he says poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. And I believe that religious thought must go to school with the poets, must go to school with the musicians. And what poets would he meant were not just versifiers, but all of those who had the courage to muster the imagination and the empathy to look at this world and see in this world an alternative vision of that world and then have the courage to articulate it, express it, and bear prophetic witness to try to transform this world in light of that better world where empathy sits at the center. So even an atheist like Shelley becomes a comrade of a Holy Ghost funky black Baptist like me. <laughs> I am old school. I'm a Jesus loving free black man. <laughs> oh, I'm I am crazy across the board, but I got to be true to my own self. I got to be true to my R O O T S movements. <laughs> so, that so that my R O U T E S, the routes that I take, stronger, I constitute a real launching pad. We all have our parochialism, we all have our provincialism. And I am in many ways parochial and provincial in the sense that I begin in the context of where I found myself. And I also believe in a certain kind of Durkheimian ancestor appreciation. That I grew up in the context where the best people that I knew in terms of character and integrity happened to be folk that had something to do with Shiloh Baptist Church, something to do like my father, Lake Clifton West, and my mother, Irene West, and my brother, Clifton. So that's what I had to work with. I do want to, for example, acknowledge my dear brother Christopher Hitchens who died. Love his essays, love his wit. We give brother Christopher a hand. We have contribution. I fight for his right to be wrong. <laughs> Learn from so many folk you have deep disagreements with. But at the same time, we have to have an ecumenical consciousness of talking about the Occupy movement. Because as you all know, we're in deep trouble. 1% of the population, only 40% of the wealth, unaccountable oligarchs at the top. Tied to middle industrial complexes, tied to corporate multiplexes, media. Tied to prison industrial complex. We need movements that bring together a variety of different peoples who are concerned and committed to truth and justice, and it is not some kind of special interest group. We were talking about that last night with my Muslim brothers and sisters. One of the worst things that's happened in this country is a reduction of politics, just a Machiavellian calculation, a Hobbesian calculation, as if it's just about interest. Which group are you part of? As if we're not free agents to choose in light of what principles we subscribe to, what kind of integrity we want to enact, what kind of character we want to embody in our short lives and our moves from my mother's womb to tomb. Let's talk about principles. Let's talk about ideals. Let's talk about poetic visions, religious visions, using imagination. So yes, we are rooted, but at the same time, we have transcending powers to choose, to decide, to be committed to something bigger than our egos, our groups, and our national communities. I told my prophetic brothers and sisters from Islam last night, America is great, America is great, grand, Allah is great. I tell my Christian brothers and sisters, every flag ought to be under the cross. Every flag, unarmed truth, unconditional love, which makes all of us an internationalist. So a baby in Ethiopia, Baby in Tel Aviv, a baby on the West Bank, baby in East Side of New York, baby in Argentina has exactly the same value across the board. Across the board. International, global, and yet still rooted in who we are. Our dear brother Howard Zinn, secular Jewish brother, just passed. We love Howard Zinn. We love him for Howard Zinn. Dissent is the highest form of patriotism. Yeah. Yeah. Highest form of patriotism. That's why I wish I could be here January 2nd for the Occupy the Rose Parade. I'll be here in spirit. I'll be here in spirit, but of course, even the Occupy movement.
must always be fearful of self-righteousness. Has played, will play, and in the spring it is going to bounce back in every corner of the globe. Look what's going on in oligarchy China under the rule of repressive communist elites even as their economy expands. Look what's going on in England. Look what's going on in Italy. Look what's going on in Greece all around the world. But even given the centrality of the Occupy movement, the Occupy movement has no monopoly on all the good stuff going on. You still got sisters wrestling with issues of domestic violence, which needs to be wrestled with. Our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters wrestling with homophobic tainting, closeting, and so forth. Dear Brother Professor Sanders, what a blessing. Give our dear brother a hand. What a blessing to have him. One of the grand pioneers. So it's a question of coalescing, and you can imagine, you know, the mainstream media, what are your demands, one or two, how does it connect to <laughs> the milquetoast, mediocre, mean-spirited Republican candidates? <laughs> how does it relate to the milquetoast, often spineless Democratic Party politicians? Yeah. You want to know how it fits in? No, we don't fit in. <laughs> like Duke Ellington's jazz band. We're lifting our voices. It's a cacophony of voices. We're not looking for unanimity. We're not looking for just consensus. We're lifting our voices because we got a moral outrage and holy anger and righteous indignation about the forms of unjust rule. Unfettered markets. Congress that looks more and more like legalized bribery and normalized corruption. <laughs> 26 lobbyists and every politician. Supreme Court unleashing even more corporate money into the public sphere, which is already poisoned by truncated alternatives and options. What do you do? You bear witness. You bear witness. And as a Christian myself, I never look for utopia in human history. I don't look for paradise in time and space. I look for a certain quality of persons in that move from womb to tomb who come together and mobilize and organize and see how far one can push. We're all born under circumstances not of our own choosing. There will always be limits and constraints. I don't want you to think that somehow I'm just putting politicians down. I think progressive politicians have a role to play. That we can find <laughs> more of them. I say this all to say that I'm just so excited to be here, so excited to go back to Union. I'm going home, and if you know, I talked there for seven years before I went to New Haven and Cambridge and, and New Jersey. And I grew up in Sacramento, California. I had to choose between going back home to Sacramento spending time with mom going back to Union and she told me, she said, I'd love to have you next to me all the time as I move into end years of my life and intensify my dance with mortality. But you know what your calling is. I said, yeah, mom, you understand. Thank you all so much.